Hello, my name is Michael. Welcome to OnlineEnglishTeacher.com. I am the professor for OnlineEnglishTeacher.com, right? And a little bit about myself. I have been teaching English for nine years. I have taught with various companies in the past and taught students all over the world, right? And if you need help learning English, there's uh, in the description, please click the link and there's going to be a link to a booking page and click on that and you can always schedule a class with me. So today we're going to be covering uh, three prepositions right in this lesson and it's talking about the most three most important prepositions that you'll be using in the English language, which is in. On and at right so always remember in. On and at. Right. And we're going to be talking about them, how they relate to space or like a place or space and time. Right. And because uh, with prepositions, we often use uh, the most used forms of prepositions we use is space and time. Right. Or location as well. Right. You can put location and space together. And the reason why is because it's just very common. They're, they're more common usage for place and time. Right. But before we begin, let's talk about what's the general idea of what a preposition is, right? So prepositions are a set of words that tell us where or when something is relation to something else, right? When I say the water is on my hand, right? We're talking about the water is on the hand. So a uh, water on hand. So we're talking about the, the relationship, the water and the hand. As I mentioned above, prepositions help us make connections between people, objects, as well as locations, right? Like places. And here's some examples of prepositions. And before we go over these examples, just know that some of these examples don't have in, on, and at. They're just to give examples of different forms of prepositions, okay? Patrick is reading on his desk, right? The preposition on. The lamp is on her desk. Right, on again. The car is parked behind the building, right? The pre preposition is behind, right? Emma said the answers before the other students in their class. Before would be the preposition, right? George loved painting in his garden. In would be the preposition. Okay, and this could kind of continue this and repeat the same ideas because I really want you guys to understand this. A preposition usually answers the question where, when, and what. But they, are, they, are, they can answer other questions as well, but those are usually the main three, right? Where, when, and what. Telling us about a person or object location, either in time, space, manner, or, or movement. So there are four types of usage of preposition, right? Uh, time place, movement, and manner. But like I said in the beginning of the class, that space or place and time, right? So space and place and time are the most important because we use them more frequently in English, right? So if you wanna practice prepositions, I would recommend looking up preposition of time and preposition of place or space, okay? And we have some examples here. Time, I have class at, 2 p.m., right? That's time, uh, space and place. The car is at the store, right? And then there we have the two kind of, uh, they're common, but not so common like time and space. Uh, movement, I move away from the dog, right? Manner, the book is by Shakespeare, right? So you don't have to really remember movement and manner. I'll be covering that in another class. But right now, the two most important, time and space. Okay, so let's learn how to use these prepositions, right? Oftentimes I see with students is that they get confused when to use in, on, and at, right? Before we go through all these words, right? Uh, I want to explain how we use in, on, and at. Typically we use in when we talk about things that are general, right? Things that are not specific. If I say I live in I live in Paris, 
Here's a good example. I live in Paris. Okay, but where do you live in Paris, right? What city do you live in? What's the address, right? Those are not specific places. Paris is very, very big, right? If I say I live in Paris, it's not specific enough to know where if you wanted to come find me, right, in Paris, then you would get lost because the information is not specific enough, right? On is a little bit more specific, but not as specific as at, right? On, I live on, let's say, Fifth Avenue, right? But where on Fifth Avenue, right? There's many houses on Fifth Avenue. There's many, many, you know, Fifth Avenue can continue and continue, right? So it's a little bit more specific than Paris, but it's not as specific as at. At, I can say I live at one, two, three, four, five fake street, right? That's more specific because that's the address of the location, right? I live at 1337 um, 8th Street Avenue or 8th Street. And that's more specific than saying I live on 8th Street, right? So that's something to con consider is that in is general, on, right, is more specific, but at is uh, very, very specific, right? So we're gonna go through some of these examples. If you like, you guys can take a picture of this, right? Take a picture and continue on to the next slide. We're gonna just cover these things on the next slide as well. Okay, for example, in for general use, centuries. I was born in the 1800s. Well, I wasn't, but for example, let's say I was, I was born in the 1800s, but what year, right? Was it 1896, 1897? What year was it, right? The 1800s is not specific enough information, right? But let's say decades, I was born in the 90s, right? But were you born in 1990? Was it May 1991? Was it August, September? We don't know. Within, we only talk about centuries, decades, years, months, seasons, centuries, uh, countries, cities, neighborhoods, or enclosed spaces, right? So for years, it would be, I was born in 1990, right? And we can also use months. In May, it rains a lot in California, right? Seasons. In winter, it's very, very cold in California. Countries. In Colombia, it is very hot, right? Cities. In, let's use Bogota. In Bogota, it is very cold right now. Mm -hmm. In neighborhoods. In Hollywood, it is very, very hot right now, right? In closed spaces. I am in the car. I am in the plane. I am in the mall. An enclosed space means like just kind of like a building or a location or even a vehicle as well, right? Like a car or a plane. Um, typically not buses. You wouldn't say I'm in the bus. You would say I'm on the bus right? because it's much more uh, bigger. It's not really an enclosed space. You can kind of slightly move around. Okay. Okay, on is more specific, but general as well, right? Time, on the weekends, on the weekdays, right? On Monday, on Tuesday, on Friday, right? Days, on May 5th, on May 6th, right? As we're seeing it now, on kind of has more, it's more specific with numbers, right? We're going more like, if I say I was born 1990, okay, but I can say I was born 1990 on May 30th, right? on May 30th. Then we have parts of the day. On Sunday morning, on Friday night, on Tuesday evening, right? Then we have streets on Olive Street. On, and then we have avenues on Fifth Avenue, right? Then we have surfaces on the table, like we have also on the hand, right? The water is on the hand, on the bed, on the floor for surfaces. Means of transportation. We can also say on the bus, on the plane, right? Some of you may say, oh, well, didn't you say that 
we can use in the plane, right? We can also use in the plane as well. I'm in the plane, right? That's when you're physically inside the plane, right? But, you know, let's say that you're traveling and the, the bus is moving, you can say I'm on the bus as well. Okay, at. At is more specific. I was born at, let's say I was born on, oh no, I was born in 1990 on May 30th at 2 p.m., right? So at talks about time that is very, very specific, right? Something that is, um, that is, has more details, right? Parts of the day at midnight, at noon, at the, uh, um, at midday, right? Time at the moment, at the past, right? Not true, that'll be in the past. Sorry about that. At the moment. Addresses. So we have one, two, three, four, five, fake street. We can also have one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, Avenue Street or, or Sixth Avenue Street, right? And then we have specific locations at Disneyland, at the mall, at the airport, at um, the hotel, right? We're talking about specific locations, right? And the reason why we have this is because it helps us understand details, right? Um, we want to know specifically about a place. But let's say if I say I live in Colombia, yeah? But where do I live in Colombia? But I say I live in Pereira, Colombia, right? And then let's say I live at the center of Colombia. That's more specific than saying I live in Pereira. Because if I say I live in the center, then you know I live in a specific location, right? Okay, and then we can go over this again. This is kind of the same thing, right? We have on uh, times of day at four o'clock, at 10.30, at noon, midnight, then mealtime, lunchtime, dinner time, holidays, Christmas, Easter, the weekend expressions there we go at the present at the moment at night then we have in oh i forgot to say this is preposition of time as well in in the months all right in april uh seasons in the summer and spring years in 1990 and decades in the 80s centuries in the 20th century long periods in the ice age in the past and the present parts of days uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, not at night. We don't say at, we don't say in night. We say at night, right? Because it's a little bit more specific when we talk about at night. Okay, days, uh, on Tuesday, on Saturday, on my birthday, on Christmas Day, on Halloween, right? Um, on dates, on June 12th, uh, on the 15th of June, on the 20th of May, on our anniversary, Parts of specific days on Monday morning, on Friday evening, on Saturday night, on Sunday afternoon, right? So this is how we use in on and at. Uh, we also have some warning down here, some warnings down here. It says, call me at the next weekend. It's call me next weekend, right? Don't say call me at the next weekend. Just say call me next weekend. I met her on the last Friday. You say I met her last Friday. Okay, let's go here. The last slide. Okay, so we have preposition in place. Here's some other examples. Okay, we have preposition uh, at a point, at the door, at the crossroad, at the traffic light, right? Uh, at the bottom or the end of, at the top of the stairs, at the bottom of the page, at the end of the street, right? This is talking about a location. Uh, group activities at the party, at the concert, at the cinema school or universities, at the school, at the university. Home, work, at work, at home, right? Shops at the bakery, at the cafe, at the chemist. Uh, okay. Uh, and, th and third, in uh, uh, 3D spaces, right? In the bag, in the classroom, right? There's water in my bottle, right? There's water in my bottle, right? Right here. On territory, on London, on London Europe, in the Alps, in the world in closed locations, uh, in the car, in the van, right? Water, in the sea, in the river, in the lake, in the swimming pool, right? Uh, printed material in the books, in the pictures, and in the newspaper, 
on surfaces on the table, carpet, roof, sofa. On the floor, on the first floor, on the fifth floor, right? On the second floor, public transportation, on the bus, on the train, on the plane, right? On the radio, on the TV for media, right? This also includes social media, on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, right? On the internet, on YouTube, on the website, right? Hopefully you're watching this on YouTube, right? So this pretty much covers some points of the prepositions, right? Hopefully I made some ideas clear for you. And please let me know if you have any questions. You can always watch this video again and pause or rewatch it again to help you understand some of the material. Yeah. All right, I'll see you guys soon. But before you do, remember to please like the video, uh, subscribe, and then leave a comment down below and to see what type of else, what other videos you would like to see in the future. All right, uh, take care and have a good day, okay? And remember to keep practicing English. Bye-bye.